So, you know, I, I don't normally on, in, in panels, I don't like to do this thing where you like, you know, it's, at most conferences, it's like you ask one question and then, okay, panelist one, answer, panelist two, answer, panelist three, and then you go to the next question. That's like certain death for, you know, for the audience, right? So, but this is a, a unique situation and I just want to make sure everyone understands. So, so we have Thailand, yep. well, two Thailands, I guess, but you're really pan-Asia, right? That's right. And then Japan, uh, and then kind of South e Southeast Asia, but you're, yeah, yeah. Living so in you're Malaysia, also, from India, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so also, and then it's, it is a uh, kind of a local experiences yeah. marketplace focused on Thailand, yeah. and then classic uh, DMC, yes? Destination management company, uh, then JTB, the largest traditional kind of travel agency and distribution and tour operator package provider uh, in, in Japan, uh, one of the largest markets in uh, travel markets in Asia and the world. And then tough to classify technology platform marketplace for experiences and uh, other services into airlines and into hotels and I'm probably only capturing like 10%, right? It's pretty much right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I, so I want to, so from, I, I have this one question. I want to, I want you to each kind of explain from what is an experience? Uh, what kind of trend are you seeing? How are you, how are you thinking about this, you know, from your businesses and from your marketplaces? Like, how are you, how are you, I know that's like 14 questions in one. I'm, so I'll let you interpret the way. So Taro, I'm going to start you know, with you. What is an experience? Why are you doing this? And uh, yeah, walk us through it. So for me, experience is a very broad sense. So I actually have it in very simple, like uh, who you are, what you do, and where, where is it? So technically, like imagine like, who you are, like, who you really are. So, like, if you are a banker showing people around, if you are a barista, if you are a runner, so what you do, so you do things like you could do city tours, you could do home cooking, you could do like all sorts of different things, like your hobbies, and where is it? So it could be attractions, it could be your home, it could be a local like, neighborhood. So all of these actually combine, and for me, you doesn't have to have like all of them, but the more you have in common, actually the intense of the local experience it is for me. And, yeah. So, and how do you? Uh, I mean, uh, so how do you uh, address you know quality uh, mm -hmm. control? I mean, how is it? Anybody can just sign up, and I can just you know I can just start having people over to my house uh -huh. for for dinner. I mean, what happens if they get if they get sick? You know, do do I sue do I sue so, you or do I sue? I mean, what what happens? How does this work? So so, so yes and no. So right, yes, everyone can sign up, but we don't really have everyone listed on the site right away. So we do have a certain we put it into two different ways. So security and quality issues. For security, we actually just on par with all the global standards, like uh, national IDs, like do KYC, we do criminal record screening and stuff like that. So for the quality wise, so we actually have a, on one side, we have an internal curation team. We also have something like ambassadors where photographers or travel bloggers go around on the first tour for free. So they take photo, they give review, they get feedback. But I mean, ultimately the reviews will be the one who, who tell them the people who make a booking, is it good or bad? We have reviewed in several things like language-wise, local expertise, like uh, hospitality. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Laurent, so tell me, uh, from your perspective, is this uh, disruptive for you? Is, is Taro, you know, is competition? How is the, the, the classic DMC world, you know, adapting to uh, to this trend, or or is it a non-trend? Is this, is this not a lot really? Of I, I really see I really see us actually complementing each other. Me as a DMC, maybe I'm seen kind of as the dinosaur in the room and the boring guy. I've been doing this for a long time. People think I do classic tours. I put 40 people in a bus. I run tours at 9 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon. This is just completely wrong. Now, maybe I should also say in Asia, uh, most DMC actually produce their own tours. So they create the tours and they operate the tour. So it's not you're buying a service from somebody and selling it to somebody else. So I think that's one point that, uh, that is quite important. So you actually control that chain from creation to providing the service uh, to the customer. A classic tour for me means that you have a customer who wants to go and see the main sites, the classic sites, the modern traveler who wants to take photos everywhere, Instagrammable pictures, 
The more traditional traveler just wants to go there and say, I have been there, I've done that, and this is the definition for me of classic tour. But this is one part of what I'm doing today. I create a lot of experienced tours as well. Now, it doesn't mean that I create all of them on my own. There are certain aspects of it, for example, the bike tour that I'm selling here in Thailand. Uh, there are people who do it better than me, so I team up with them and distribute their services to my customers. Now, my customers are both offline and online, and I see myself simply as adding value to all of these people. So, and just, can you just give us a sense of the scale of, uh, of Asian trails? Uh, so how many, uh, and, and how many destinations do you operate? Okay, I run nine destinations in Asia. I uh, have 33 offices that all produce their own tours, and I handle about half a million customers a year. Now, so what about kind of the real kind of local experience, like the type of thing that Taro would take my tour is trying to develop? So, so are you guys... So are you competitors, or um, could you be a, a buyer for, for Take My Tour, or should he be regulated out of existence? In my opinion, I would be ready to, to, to buy from, uh, okay. from Taro. He has products that complement my product offering. Uh, he lets me make a little bit of money on it. So yes, I'll be very, very happy to distribute his tours and to bring them to the right customer. Because distribution is not just distributing your product to everybody, it's actually finding the right people to distribute it that will be happy in that particular tour that you are offering. And, and that's true in a sense because right now we have been like start selling a couple of our uh, offering to like DMC or to travel agents abroad as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Ken, uh, for, for the Japanese uh, market, are you say, you know, we heard a little bit, I think, earlier from, uh, from Taka uh, that there is a little bit, you know, of a shift. Are you seeing uh, kind of a, a similar, you know, thing at uh, JTV? Yes. I believe those things are also happening in Japan as well, not just for Japanese travelers, but also inbound travelers within Japan. Mm -hmm. For example, if you look at Japanese, like, uh, sorry, inbound travelers within Japan, they are staying usually 14 days in Japan on average. That's a statistic, but 14 days, quite long. We are providing today authentic tours, uh, to put on, uh, some of the authentic tours, including some of the culture, historical things as well. So that is providing very unique experience with guaranteed process, also itinerary. But at the same time, customer will be just satisfied with those experience. And on top of that, they are staying another, let's say, long time in Japan. So they might, they might want to experience something local though. So they're spending more time in Japan. That is something we, uh, we don't really have a good solution today. That's really giving us opportunity to work together. For example, we are providing some of the contents to a uh, provider for some years. So it's like a win and a win situation. But at the end of the day, we really love to understand what customer wants. But that is one of the missing pieces we have today. How, how do, and this is a really a question both for Lauren and, and for Ken. So, you know, uh, so I'm, I you said the word dinosaur, you were blunt, so I'm just going to be blunt. So, Two very traditional, you know, trade and, and consumer brands in Japan. So the like the preconception, you know, classic, you know, group tours, you know, on you know on a bus, you know, on you know on mass. And then you have these startups that come along, whether it's you know Airbnb or Take Me Tour or Hivesters. We just you know we just heard from uh, from earlier. So so there's obviously there's a product uh, piece to this. But there's also a market perception, you know, piece. Like you've got to convince, I mean, this, you know, this group here, but also, <laughs> you know, the the consumer marketplace, you know, of how do you how do you reinvent, you know, like how do you reinvent, you know, a brand like like JTB and and, and in the trade like Asian Trails. Maybe so, Ken, I'll just how are you approach that. things to, to say, but one of the things is to try something new. But it's, it's just started some of the we just started some of the very small project within a JTB group, for example, C2C, for example, providing some of the application to inbound travelers to provide them opportunity to meet, meet with the local P, uh, local, t, uh, local folks in the market so that they can just do something local together. But we just play as a marketplace. So we just not, do not really involve uh, within the experience management. But at the same time, we do some legacy business as a dinosaur, but at the same time, we guarantee experience. That's something new. At the same time, we make some investment onto the local startups to see what's happening. So it's like a, we are still in a testing phase 
to see how we can just bring two different things together. So at the same time, all the challenge is actually happening in the data layer because user, user requirement is so changed. For example, real time is so, essential, so critical for online FIT. But like us, operator, do not really ready for those like a real time transaction for both two operator, uh, sorry, product development, also marketing. So that is so, like a complex oper operation model. That's something we haven't really figured out. But at the same time, that still need to require some, let's say, deep analysis, also POC kind of approach for the new project. And Laurent, what about you? Know, what about you? I, is, it, is, it, is it purely perception in, in the market? Is it a perception problem or is there, is there a product problem? No, there is clearly a perception problem. Uh, tools are my DNA. Experiences are my DNA. This is what I do. This is what I'm good at. Now, it's not a static tool that I'm creating. I really don't like the word content because I'm creating a fabulous tour. I'm giving you a great experience. It's not just content that I'm loading in a computer and sell it to somebody else. There's a lot of passion what I do. We have huge teams of product creation, product development. They don't sit there and do the same thing like 15, 20 years ago. They completely change what they are doing. And I really believe that this is what is going to keep me relevant in the marketplace and what is going to continue to bring customers to my company. So, Prasanna, you, know, you have this vista into so many different you know, channels, and you're in this place where you're, you have to deal with the classic product, but you're also trying to incorporate a lot of this new product. Like, what's your, what's your view on all of this? <coughs> so, first of all, I'm gonna make a bold prediction here. So, the traditional tours versus experience is the question, right? I don't feel the traditional tours are going to ever die, right? So uh, what needs to change is about how the operators are delivering the traditional tours. They need to change it. One is in terms of can you make it unique? It's not the same nine to five fits everybody. Uh, I'm going to use the bad word in travel industry, right? Personalization, people talk about a lot. But I think Jim mentioned it sometime back. How do you personalize on the ground is where it's going to be different. So half the booking platforms today uh, talk about even shoe sizes and age and passport, but they do not ask about what the customer is, like who are you? Are you a foodie or are you a guy who loves craft beers? So that's where the industry needs to change. Take the same tour, it's fine. You're seeing the Roman ruins in Libya, but can you deliver it at sunset? So, but, I, but then how do you, so it's great to talk about that. And I think that's also why the personalization word, it's kind of a dirty word, at, I think, at travel conferences, because everyone uses it. No one really knows what it is, no, except for maybe a handful of companies. No one really knows how to do it. And I'm talking about it from a technical perspective. So wh what's, what's, key, what's holding the industry back from a technology perspective? And is this, how, what, like, what's the role of the operator in this as well? I think the technology thing is adoption, right? So I think we spoke about a lot, even the previous panel, it's about if I'm an operator, I need to today uh, go into so many different platforms like Veltro or Traveloka and make my trip. The channel management thing is the big missing piece today. Can I actually plug into one place and can it be delivered everywhere? Uh, which is the technology problem we are facing? Now we're integrating. We need to go and talk to four different uh, partners who are doing it. So that, that is the big gap. Uh, can we have a single channel management kind of solution which uh, the operators can uh, plug into and they can distribute in any market? So that, that's, that's what is missing today. Yeah, you know, I, I had an interesting experience. So I'm going to you know, Japan next week to speak at you know, Web and Travel in Tokyo, which is uh, you know, Siu Hoon's event, Siu Hoon, who moderated yesterday. And so I've never been to Tokyo before, and so I'm really excited. And so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at lots of websites, probably every website here that does listings in, in Tokyo. And the first thing that comes up on every single website is the robot restaurant. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I'm not really interested in robots or having my meals served by robots, you know, at a restaurant. But so every single website is treating me the same. In some cases, I'm logged in, like, because I'm going to these sites, you know, all the time. So what's, what is, you know, what is missing here? Like, why, why is it so hard in this sector? I'm, whoever but can. Probably one of the hardest thing is to, like, for example, if we talk about hotel, for example, it's like a, ex, ex, well, let's say, ex, expectation is set. So it's so all the matter is actually the price at the, end, at the end of the day. But when it's come to the experience, things are not really clear at all. So probably you may want to go to a robot restaurant, but at the same time, you may, you may also want to go to sightseeing. But even though we say robot is one hand, sightseeing is one hand, 
there is no way to make a decision at all. But probably OTA could help us to, to see how customers are making a trigger to decide what at the end of the day. But that is one of the things we haven't really figured out at all. That's the reason why you may see a lot of robot restaurant, which is not really relevant for you. But that's, that is happening today only because of the search engine sometimes work uh, the pool the data because of the popularity. So that's not really optimized at all for, for, for experience in the local market. I do want to come back a little bit to you know the, the regulatory you know piece because I do think that this is this is really important. So his, historically, and we heard this also on the the DMO panel you know yesterday, there's this whole legacy of regulation, you know, f which you know I think you know in particular you know I'm sure Lauren and especially you know Ken, JTB, and I'm very familiar with airlines, perhaps one of the most regulated industries in the world, but this is a this is an entirely new, entirely new world. Uh, so. Uh, is uh, our, and we've been hearing, I think, on stage. Well, you know, the marketplace will sort it out. You know, it's customer reviews will, will you know, will make this will make this happen. Is that so, Laurent? Is that you know, is, is that enough? Do we need more within this this space? How uh, how should the industry approach it? I think it's a, it's a difficult question to actually answer, because things are changing so fast. What is relevant today? What will be relevant in the future? Uh, of course, you have the distribution that's changing. I'm in an online and an offline world, so that, that uh, both of them are, uh, are really relevant. I spoke before about the relevance to the customer, the value that, you, uh, that you're adding. Uh, I think the core is still extremely important. Your adaptation to the core is extremely important. And you know when I see the slide here where you say operators, DMC, global tour operator, travel agency, traveler, it's not quite correct anymore. This is a very traditional way of seeing it. Um, you will have there the global tour operator. Hang on one second because we don't have that up on the screen. Can you just put that up, up on, the, on the slides here on the screen so everyone can see it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I was saying, you see, this is not quite correct anymore in today's world. You have a DMC that sells to global tour operator. That one doesn't necessarily sell to a travel agency anymore. He might be selling directly to a traveler. So I, I have another slide coming. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> can, we put up, can we put up the next slide? So that is the traditional model. And then, so then here we see kind of different paths. What, go ahead. I'm really sorry. I was uh, <laughs> no, no, a little bit away. fast there. <laughs> you know, I like to say when things are not quite the thing uh, uh, I believe. Yeah, so you see there, your DMC, Global Tour Operated Travel Agency World, is not necessarily like that anymore. One of them can be cut out. You have the Global Tour Operated that can be cut out because he goes directly to a consumer. Or you can have the travel agency that is doing micro tour operating. Uh, that micro tour operating doesn't mean that he's going to buy all services from a DMC. He might be buying some directly on hotel beds, for example, and uh, certain tours on, uh, on, uh, on an OTA. But if he wants to have an individual tailor-made experience, he's going to try to get to somebody he can trust and understands his customer. And I think that for the OTA today is very difficult. An OTA, very often, that is only online, is a kind of a McDonald's. Now, you buy something, you sell something. The customer wants customizations. It's very difficult to do it. In the traditional world, it's maybe a little bit easier because you have a trusted advisor in a tour operator or a travel agency that knows the customer, that knows the destination, or has a close relationship to DMC, and can actually tailor make an experience for a specific request from a customer. How, how has the OTA, the, the, the growth of OTAs in the marketplace changed, changed your business? Uh, well, one of the key criteria there is certainly that in the past, people bought multi-day, multi-country tours from one source. That has very much changed. So this is diverse. And the relevance in it is that you have to play in every marketplace doesn't mean that I'm going to work with every OTA because my products are suitable to some and maybe not so suitable for others. So I need to select with whom am I going to work so that I, uh, that I can bring that experience uh, to the customer. Ken, for your marketplace in, you know, in, in Japan, I mean, JTB is kind of the, is the, the traditional uh, 
uh, you know, 800 pound gorilla in the market, but obviously all of the players, you know, uh, Expedia, you know, Booking.com, Airbnb, you know, we've heard with Kluke also pushing in, you know, into the market. How are, how is the traditional brand like JTB adapting? Well, as a land operator, well, that's something we have been doing so, so many years, nothing changed. But if you talk about distribution, that's a major challenge happening. That's uh, one of the angles, actually, what you mentioned, regulations. In Japan, land operators, the uh, travel agency, for example, including us, we have to comply with travel regulation, which just include two things. Number one is accommodation, number two is transportation. In the past, activities is out of scope from the law. So user experience is guaranteed for only for two P's, but if you include uh, uh, activities, still we are providing those as a package, but now OTA is coming into the same ground and they're providing activity as a solo or standalone products. And they're not really complying with anything at all. So the user experience is not really guaranteed at all, but no, the, the trust model probably only can be developed by user feedback. But that is not really the truffle model uh, when it's coming to regulation or compliance. So actually we are just working on how we can tackle on this issue together with the Japan Tourism Authority. But we haven't really figured out what, what could be the good solution to provide a consistent user experience to the market. So then Prasanna, another prediction from you then, the future of tours and experiences and packages, solo, solo sales, where, a la carte, where is it headed? I think it's going to be a mix, right? I think when you spoke about it, it's going to be a mix of everything coming together. But it's about how, uh, how do you, like when you say going to Tokyo, instead of showing 2,000 products to you, how do you reduce the fatigue by understanding who Douglas is and showing the right thing to the right person? Is there, because there are going to be people who are doing the cooking classes. And there are going to be people who are chasing for the Instagram shots. Yeah, understanding and pitching the right product. They both coexist. Uh, I know we're, uh, question for you just about on the regulation, Taro. Uh, any interaction with you know the tourism authority of Thailand or with the ministry here? Uh, are they? I mean, are they? Do they even know you exist? Are they? Are, are they <clears throat> supportive? Are they? <laughs> are they? Are they less supportive? Like, what's? That's a tricky question. So we actually in touch with both of them. We are, ha have a pretty good relationship with them. So obviously they know we exist. They know and this thing exists and this is a new evolutions of of tourism industry. So, but I, I also understand them that they have many stakeholders. So we are actually working closely with them on how do we have a better and more like adaptive like uh, regulation so to to solve the problems. Okay, I want to wrap up. Uh, Bruce did this yesterday just with a quick lightning round. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to say one word, uh, and then I want each of you to give a one word response. Okay, I'm going to go through a few of these. Okay, Prasanna, I'm going to start with you. DMC. Dinosaur. <laughs> Ken? <laughs> yeah, dinosaur, I should say. No. Oh. Relevance. Hmm. We'll be there. You'll be there? DMC will be there. They'll, they'll be there. Okay. One more. Uh, so, Taro, I'll start with you. Uh, Air Asia. Uh, interesting move. Future. Unique opportunity. OTAs better watch out. Yeah, okay. Very interesting. Last one, Prasanna. Google. Yeah, the winter is coming. So. <laughs> Ken, Google? Partner. Partner. That's very diplomatic of you. <laughs> Artificial intelligence. Knows you better. I'm sorry? Knows you better. Knows you better. Okay, well, that's probably quite true. Ladies and gentlemen, Taro, Laurent, Ken, Prasanna, thank you very much. Thank you.